Hi! Welcome back! In a previous video, we learned about pandas series and data frames. These are the topics that we covered in that video. If you haven't watched it yet or are interested in learning more about these concepts, I'd suggest you check that video out as well. In this video, we're going to be exploring pandas grouping mechanisms. We'll learn about concatenating data frames, merging data frames, joining data frames, and the group by method, which includes um, attributes such as count, describe, mean, min, max, standard deviation, etc. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, as always, is import pandas as pd and numpy as np. Next, what we're going to do to explore some grouping mechanisms, um, our, our first one is actually going to be concatenation. So the first thing we're going to do is um, create three data frames. Um, and you'll see that the only thing that's differentiating the data frames is um, the name of the rows and the values inside. So the column names are going to stay the same. And that's how we know that we can use concatenation. So um, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, a data set. And this one is just going to be a random NumPy matrix of three rows and two columns. And remember how RandN actually only goes from negative one to one. So we're going to multiply it by five to get some variance in there. The next thing is we're going to create um, a column Python list. So, so the, the, the names of the columns will be A and B. And then the next thing is um, the names of the rows. And so this is going to be um, 0, 1, and 2. And we're going to turn this um, pi, uh, NumPy matrix into a pandas data frame. So um, like if you remember, if you do shift tab, you can kind of see what it includes. And so it needs data, index, and columns, which are going to be data 1, and then end 1, and call 1 is, um, are the parameters that we're going to insert in here to create our data frame. And now we can look at how it looks. So as you can see, um, we have some values that range from um, that range vary a lot because we multiplied it by five. And then we see A and B as the column names and then zero, one and two as our um, row name. So the next thing we're going to do is create another data frame. And this we're going to just copy this first one and change a couple of things. So as I said in the beginning, um, we are going to keep the column names the same but we're going to change um, the other things. So the first thing is to change everything to a 2 from a 1. We're going to keep the first row um, of, of the cell the same because random arrays will make it different every time. This one, um, we're going to change to 3, 4, and 5 instead of 0, 1, and 2. And then again, we're going to change these to 2 so that it can um, match up. Now we're going to look at this and we see that the column names are the same, the values are different, and the row names are different, which is what we wanted. Now for our last one, we're going to um, do the same thing, change everything from a 2 to a 3. We're going to keep the first row the same because it'll be different anyway. We're going to keep the column names the same, but we're going to change the row names to um, 6, 7, and 8 this time. Okay, and now we're going to see how it looks, and it looks like that, just like you expected. So um, now we have three different data frames with different in, um, row names, same column names, and different values inside. So now we're going to see how we can concatenate these. And so when we concatenate by row, they'll basically put um, the, the data frames one on top of each other. So the syntax for this is pd.concat, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, and inside, we're going to have the data frames that we want to concatenate. So in this case, um, and yeah, we can do shift tab to kind of see how um, we need to insert this. This is a little confusing, but basically what, what we need are data frames, which we have. We have three. So we're going to um, write df1, df2, and df3 as our three data frames. And that's the only parameter we're going to insert for um, row-based concatenation. So it's taking um, all of these rows, putting them just one on top of each other in order, and um, basically everything else stays the same. So no values are deleted or replaced or anything like that. Um, other thing we can try is column-based concatenation, 
which um, we'll have to specify the axis equals one because remember axis equals zero means row based something and axis equals one is column based. And so since we want to um, concatenate by column, we need to say axis equals one as our second parameter. So the syntax is going to be pretty much the same as what's in cell 13, but just that addition is there. So when we have um, column based concatenation, it just puts them side by side rather than on top of each other. But since we still have ind indices that are um, three, four, five, uh, and six, seven, eight, we're still gonna have um, on top of each other because all of those still need to be accounted for. We can't just stop with zero, one, and two. Um, but as you can see in the places where, or sorry, in the data frames where we don't have um, a particular index set, um, such as uh, the first one doesn't have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so all of those are missing values or NANs because they don't exist. So it's just kind of a diagonal that has everything and everything else is just um, non-existent. Um, but this is how to do column-wise concatenation. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to see how to um, merge data frames. So the difference between concatenation and merging is that um, for when we have merging, it kind of uses one um, column that's the same between the two, and it's able to merge it on that column. And so we don't have, when we um, put them together, we don't have a repeating columns because the one that's um, the same is just merged one on top of one another. Um, and so that's also how we can tell that we want to use merging is if we have a column that's exactly the same between two different data sets. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a um, data frame. This one we're going to call df1 equals pd.dataframe. And we're in this one, instead of using um, these Python lists to, um, as parameters, we're just going to use a dictionary. Because if you can remember from a previous lesson, we can just use a dictionary to specify everything that we need to in just this line. And so what it does is it takes the key as the column name and then the um, list that we refer to that key as the values in the data frame. And it actually defaults the indices to um, just zero through whatever. So our first column is going to be called combine, which if you can guess is the one that we're going to be um, combining on. And so this, um, this uh, column is going to be common between DF1 and the second data frame that we're going to create. So in this one, the values inside of the combine uh, column are just going to be CO1, CO2, um, and CO3, CO4. And that just um, is short for column one, column two. Um, but you can, you can kind of create any, um, any variables you want to. But just make sure to include some letters um, so that it doesn't add up any values. If you just include numbers, it might add some values up. So um, we want to have strings as the values to really see that it's working. The next one, um, the next column that we're going to have is going to be called A. And what it's going to have is A1, A2, A3, and A4. And then finally, we're going to have um, column B, and that's going to have B1, B2, B3, and B4. So now we're going to view this array, or sorry, this data frame, so DF1, and this is how it looks. So um, it has a combined column, and then the A and the B, and the indices are just the default, so starting from 1 up till 3, or sorry, starting from 0 up till 3. Now we're going to create a second data frame that we're going to merge with this one. So we're just going to copy and paste this and change all the ones to a two. And the other thing that's going to change is um, column A and column B. And those are going to change to column C and column D um, with the corresponding C1, C2, C3, C4, D1, D2, D3, and D4. Um, and the uh, combined column is going to stay the same because we want one similarity um, so that we it can have something to merge on. So we're gonna view this and this is how it looks. As we expected, the combined one is the same, but we have C and D with corresponding um, different values. Um, so now we can explore kind of how um, we merge. So this is pd.merge, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, and we're gonna specify two uh, different um, kind of data frames that we wanna merge and then what we wanna merge it on. So we wanna merge it on combine in this case, um, just because that's the similarity between the two. So as we can see, um, once we merge it, all of the columns are accounted for, but we don't have a double combine one, um, which is the speciality of merging. It, it doesn't repeat anything. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to see how we can use joining um, to join data frames that don't have the same index. So, so far we've seen how um, these ones have the same index when we, when we combine. Um, or sorry, when we merge. But this time we're going to see what happens or what we do if it doesn't have, um, the rows don't have the same names. That's where joining comes in. So for this we're going to create two different data frames again. Um, and this time it's going to be um, where we have the all the columns are going to be different. Um, but one of them, so, so basically we have A, B in one data frame and then C and D in another one. Um, and they're going to follow the same format. Um, but in this case, we're going to actually specify um, the index. So last time, we just let it be default. This time, we're going to set it um, differently for each one, just slightly differently, but they will be different, um, as you can see. OK, so as we can see here, we have um, two data frames that we want to join. And we use this um, kind of syntax to join data frame two to one. So that basically means that we're going to keep data frame one as is, but we're just going to join um, data frame two for any um, row names that match up. So as we can see, we have zero, one, and two as is. Um, but since data frame two has uh, the first i1 and i2 um, that's common between the two, it, added, it adds um, the values for data from two to those. Um, and then since it doesn't have it for zero, it just has that as um, missing values. Um, and so if we want to switch this around to say data frame two dot join data frame one, it's going to keep data frame two as is, and it's going to um, just join whatever um, matches up with data frame two in data frame one. And so in this case, we see kind of um, one, two, and three as is, but since one and two are common between the two, it's able to match that, and i3 is not in data frame one, and so it's not able to match that. Okay, so now we're gonna look at um, our last kind of area of panda grouping methods, um, which is group by. So for group by, basically it'll be easier to uh, kind of visualize what this does if we have a, a data frame that we can work with and use group by on. So let's first create that. So um, we're going to create a data frame that kind of plays out the scenario of someone in an ice cream shop. And so we're going to call that df, just data frame, since it's only going to require one. Um, pd.dataframe, and then inside here we're going to use the same dictionary um, method. And so we're going to have number of scoops as one column. Um, and this one, we're going to have the options as one, and then another one, and then two, another two, three, and another three. So we have kind of some repeat values, which is exactly where group by comes into play. When one of the columns has um, kind of repeat um, strings or repeat numbers, that's where you can kind of tell yourself that group by is something that you can use for this. Um, and you'll see why in a second. Um, the next uh, column name is going to be flavor. And for this, we're going to do all different. Same with the last column that's going to be price. So we're going to say vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, cookie dough, peanut butter, and pistachio for flavor. And then price is going to be $1, $1.50, um, $2, $2.50, $3, and $3.50. So it's just incrementing and they're all different from each other, which is the goal. So we only want one column that kind of has repeat um, values. Okay, so now we're going to see how this data frame looks. And to that, we're just going to say um, df. So we can see that there's number of scoops, flavor, and price as the columns. The indices we didn't specify, so they're just the default. And then number of scoops, we obviously see there's um, a couple ones, couple twos, and couple threes. So now what we're going to do is create a group by object. Um, so this is going to be group equals df.groupby. And then we're going to group by the number of scoops because this is the one that kind of has repeating ones. Um, and so this is actually not going to output anything if we say group because it is an object. And so it's not actually like um, a, a data frame in itself. It's just an object that's storing um, a, a form of this uh, data frame, which is a group by. Um, and so what we're going to do with this is we're going to call some uh, methods off of it because that is the purpose of gr group by. Um, it's to kind of uh, analyze our data frame in terms of one column um, that's repeating. 
So um, we can do group.count to see the counts for each um, number of scoops. So for uh, one number of scoops, we have um, two flavors and two prices, which we know because there's um, the vanilla and chocolate and then $1 and $1.50. Um, same with the next two. We can also do group.describe, and this is obviously going to describe um, different uh, aspects of the three numbers um, of potential scoops that an ice cream can have. Um, and so we see like count, median, mean, things like that. Um, and so it does that based off of the data frame that we have. So for example, mean is just gonna average one and 1.5 to get 1.25. Um, and we can also describe based on just one of the um, types of number of scoops. So um, if you remember how to get one of those rows, it's going to be dot loc um, because columns we can just specify with the square brackets, but rows we need that loc. Okay, so next we're going to take a look at how to find the mean, and we can see this from our um, data frame of uh, kind of aspects of the data frame above but we can also do it by just saying grp.mean, which is an easier way to get it. Um, next, we're gonna look at a couple more things. Um, oh, and also a quick note about this mean one. It only works on numerical data, which is why it didn't work on the flavors. Yeah, so we can do it on min. We can find the minimum value. So out of the two possibilities for one, between um, one and 1.5, 1 one was the minimum. So it gives that, and then the flavor that corresponds with that minimum price. Then we can find the max, which does the other one. Um, and then we can also do um, the standard deviation. And that is also in this chart, but this is how to get it um, by itself. So um, these are just some of the methods that we can call off of group by. There's obviously a lot more um, and you can explore that if you'd like. So just a quick recap of what we've done today. So um, we imported the libraries and then we created three different data frames um, using Python lists um, and NumPy arrays. And we first saw how to concatenate it row-wise, um, so it puts it one on top of each other, and then column-wise it puts it um, side by side. And then we created um, two more data frames that we use to see how merging works, which is basically where if we have a column that matches exactly, it's able to merge it on that column um, and create a new data frame. And then we uh, created a couple more data frames that we use to join. Um, and so this one basically is if the index names are differing between the data frames. And finally, we did some group by exploration. Um, we created a data frame where one column had repeating values, um, and then we called some methods off of it, which um, we just went through. Well, that's it for now. If you've enjoyed the content in this video, make sure to give it a like and comment down below any questions you may have. I've also included a little activity in the description box that relates to the skills we learned in this video, so I welcome you to try that out as well. If you're new here, then make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos that'll help you on your journey towards mastering artificial intelligence. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.